Scarefest Radio is sponsored by Blue Leaf Naturals, CBD and hemp oil products, created with care from seed to shelf, blueleafnaturals.com. Spirit Mechanics, for your spiritual health and well-being. Find them on Facebook, M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X. And by Coyote Chris Sutton, bringing light to the darkest places, coyotechris.com. and beliefs presented on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the management, the affiliates and broadcast partners, or the sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. What of your husband? Would he approve of his pretty young wife tending a gaggle of unfortunates? <laughs> What's alchemy? Miss Lena told me about it. It's just a bit of fun, ma'am. Potions and spells. It's blasphemy. Who's he? He arrived in the dead of night. Where are you from? The servants of the divine where the fairies had conjured a being of pure evil. For all of us in the gravest of danger. We called this beast the Krampus. <laughs> Come forth, child of darkness, and do my bidding. You can still save the children. Hello and welcome everyone to Scarefest Radio, the original, original, I cannot talk tonight, I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. The original broadcast date is March 8, 2019. Our guest tonight is Maria Olson, she is an actress and producer and just, her IMDB list just freaks me the hell out. So we're gonna, we're gonna go over a lot of stuff tonight. I do need to remind everybody. If you're wanting to speak at the Scarefest, this is the last month to apply. Uh, we've actually got the first cut ready, but we still have some speaker slots that are open. So if you want to speak, you need to get your application in or it's going to be too late because we've actually, with the remodeling at the uh, convention center, we're actually short uh, a room or two. So we won't be able to fit in as many seminars as we usually do. Um, I've not talked about it a lot, but vendor applications. We're also, because we have less floor space, Vendor applications are going, uh, you better get your vendor application. We're going to sell out of vendor booths this year. We haven't sold out yet, but it is going to, I have no doubt that it's going to happen just because we've, uh, we've had to shuffle stuff around and, um, uh, and, uh, to get it, uh, as much, as much floor space as we can out of what we have to work with. And finally, the Scarefest Radio gift shop. Stop by, get a $5 t-shirt. We've got t-shirts, we've got uh, Jack Daniels merchandise, we've got uh, Scarefest Radio t-shirts, we've got a lot of stuff. Go take a look at it, scarefestradio.com, click gift shop, and, um, and that's what I got. Now, I'm going to explain to everybody why I'm so frazzled tonight. I... If you're, you've watched the show for a while, you know I sit down every evening, nice and early, usually about 6 or 7 o'clock before the show, to make sure everything works. Well, Windows Update had non-consensual sex with my computer today, and nothing worked. I went to listen to make sure all the audio worked and everything, nothing worked. 
Windows Update had completely rewritten my entire uh, program that I used to do the show on, and I spent the best part of two hours just getting stuff to work. So I'm 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 I'm, I'm just totally off my game now. It's it's going to mess me up all night. I just know it. We will give away a three-day pass tonight, a three-day pass to the Scarefest 2019 Scarefest XII, Scarefest 12. Uh, we'll do that at the half-hour mark. We will do it on the Facebook page, the Facebook <coughs> business page, the main page that says The Scarefest. Um, I'll do a special post uh, at some point during the first hour, so you will know, first half-hour, so you'll know where that is. Um, now... Without further ado, oh, and I do want to say, I better say, uh, Jason Boyd is my co-host tonight. Hello, Jason. Welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure. This, apparently doing the show is the only thing Jason can pull off without going to the hospital. Uh, everything else, uh, there's some emergency room visit, but he's always here for his co-host spot. You got to give the man that. I mean, you know, I uh, figured if, uh, as long as the docs keep stitching me back together and putting in, you know, uh, other organs and stuff from other uh, corpses, I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, uh, um, that tape, what's the name of that tape that um, uh, they advertise on TV? It'll it'll stop anything, Jason, if it comes down to it, that rubberized tape um, that uh, they oh, advertise Oh, the stuff that happens on the boat and it, like, keeps the yeah, boat afloat yeah. If it'll seal a boat, it'll do wonders for your little problems. Okay, now. I think, I think they may or may have used that already, but I'm not sure, so. All right. Maria Olson, uh, I'm sure you had no idea what you were getting yourself into. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wes. And no, I had no idea. <laughs> now, my first question, right out of the gate. I looked at your IMDb page. I looked at your uh, 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 Wikipedia page. 2005, that's when you appeared in the States, and by 2008, you were working your ass off with uh, just an ungodly uh, career since then. What the hell were you doing for the first part of your life? <laughs> you <laughs> pop onto the, uh, the Hollywood scene and stay busy after that. Yeah, um, I was in uh, East London, South Africa until January 2005 when I came out to Los Angeles. I did a whole bunch of theater, like 50 shows and musicals and a little bit of radio. And I also was a bankruptcy trustee with one of the top five accounting firms, PricewaterhouseCoopers. So I have a varied and different background. Yeah, but when I got to Los Angeles, I was... I did theater for a year, and then I was like, no, I need to do film. I've been wanting to do film all my life, and I'm here now in L.A. And then I just decided to do film, and, well, here we are, doing film. And, and apparently, apparently you're damn good at it. Um, but just, it, it did, it caught me by surprise, because Wikipedia, that's when it, they, that's like your headline. <laughs> Moved to the States in 2005. And then I look over at your IMDb page, and then uh, it, from 2008 on, you are consistently busy. So the question I'm going to ask you is, do you even own a home? Do you, because it doesn't look to me like you, to, to do that much over the course of your career, uh, over 150 features and shorts, I believe is the number that they were throwing around. Is that about right? No, it's uh, it's about 220 right now, oh. but some are in development, so it's 203, I think, on on the uh, the front page, yeah. Oh, so it went the other way. Okay, the the math boggles me. The math boggles me. Um, how? I'm I'm just gonna come out and say it. How do you keep up with that type of schedule? Um, just the last three years. Let's just look at the last three years. Um, I, when I was a bankruptcy trustee, I learned how to prioritize things because I was super busy all of the time. So it's easy for me to say, okay, today, A and B and C projects are urgent and I have to do them and I have to get to them and then just get them done. You know, um, if I've given deadlines and things, I'm absolutely fine. If I'm given open ended, oh, just get to it when you can, then I crash and burn all the time. But it's just knowing what has to be done and then just finding time to do it. That's what I do. Now uh, this week I did um, I did my homework. I, I watched Painkiller. <laughs> yeah, Painkiller. Um, all the creatures were stirring. Uh, I didn't get around to Krampus Origins, but those were the the three most recent uh, things that it hit. Uh, streaming and um, 
Now, your parts in those two, I wish I'd watched Krampus because you obviously <laughs> had a much bigger part in that. But yeah. I will say that um, you are, I, I almost want to re- uh, compare you to Art the Clown. You, to not have lines, you did a, a really good job in All the Creatures Were Stirring just with your little practically mime-like uh, appearance uh, throughout the uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> the uh, collection of, of shorts. I love that role. Um, you know, it's these, um, I've done quite a few of the roles without actual dialogue, and I just love them in that it gives me an opportunity to get thoughts and ideas across without actually speaking. Um, coming from a theater background and a physical acting background, um, I just find that so much fun. And sometimes I even find it easier to work with um, non-dialogue roles than it is to work with a whole bunch of dialogue. Um, uh, On that particular project, now, I have to say, I loved the movie. Um, the, um, The question about it is, it was such a fun movie to watch. Now, your part was in, in that one, um, we'll call it a setup scene, which incidentally, that was probably, I've watched a lot of those type of movies where they take mm. uh, stories, you know, and, and build a movie out of various different stories. But that one, it felt more natural. It felt more, more. in other words, the director, the writer, did a really good job of putting that together. Yeah, knowing that you were not actually in all of the different sections of that movie, did how was that filming? Did did you did they film that ahead of time where you knew kind of how much fun the movie was going to be, or was your part first? How how did that work out? Oh, I think I was one of the the last days to shoot actually, um, and if I remember correctly, I only got the script for the wraparound story for my story, and not for the others. So I didn't know actually what was happening in the other stories at all. And uh, Rebecca would just tell me, okay, walk out and hold this plaque, the name of whatever scene, and I want a feeling of ABC from you. And that's how we just did it, you know, just decided on something else to present non-verbally for every different vignette, so to speak, every different segment. Um, But no, I had no idea what the stories were. Um, I was just having fun in the moment, like doing all different things and thinking all different things. Did uh, The only other question I have on that, now do you, um, when you did that, now did the other actors that were playing out the little miniature vignettes, if you will, were, was that part of your filming? In other words, did you get to do your thing and then they came out and did their little, their mime part? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it was shot on the same day um, as my part, but later on in the day, I had already left when they did the bulk of that okay. shooting. I just pretty much walked on, walked off, walked on, walked off, brought a different placard out, walked off, different placard, walked off. You know, that was pretty much me. I was done in, I think, three hours. Of course, it took an hour to do my hair, um, but yeah, it was a very <laughs> quick in and out shoot. Um, well, I just want, we're going to go ahead and take our first commercial break, uh, then I'll hand it over to Jason. I just want to say, that movie might become a Christmas tradition that around my home. That was the most fun Christmas-oriented horror movie that I think I've ever seen, and uh, uh, congratulations on being a part of it. Everybody, you're watching Thank Scarefest you. Radio. We'll be right back. <laughs> Have you checked out the Mama Ruby's family of metaphysical and spiritual shows? The Mystical Fair in Lexington, Kentucky. Lexington's only monthly psychic and holistic healing arts fair. The Inner Light Festivals in Louisville in June and Lexington in November. And watch for Mama Ruby's Expo coming in 2020. Plus, Mama Ruby's Meta Lecture Series, featuring interesting guests speaking on fascinating subjects. Start your journey now at MamaRubies.com for more information. And 
and welcome back everybody to Scarefest Radio. I'm going to hand it over now to my co-host, Mr. Jason Boyd. Well, first off, let me say thank you for coming back. Like I said, I, we, uh, I know we discussed before the show that uh, you and I did an interview, gosh, like I said, it was 10 years or better. And um, so I was, uh, I was thrilled when you said you'd come back. And of course, like I said, you've done a, you know, a lot of work since then. Um, I think the last time that we talked, I think you just finished up Diner. And um, I have it on DVD and stuff. Like I said, it's still one of my favorite movies. I love it. <clears throat> and uh, Wes stole some of my questions. So I'm going to, you know. I'm going to kind of word some of mine differently. But uh, as far as, like, you know, when you were a kid, what did you see yourself as being an actress? Did you want to do acting? And, I mean, what kind of what, what inspired you to do it? Um, I used to watch, like, a ton of movies. I've always loved watching movies. And um, I used to, like, really look at the performances of, like, actresses, huge big name actresses that I looked up to, like Jodie Foster and Jane Fonda and people like that. And... Um, I wanted to be what they were in the film, like Agnes of God, uh, Jane Fonda was a psychiatrist. I wanted to be that all of a sudden. And then Kathleen Turner, she was a writer in Romancing the Stone. I wanted to be that. And then finally I figured out that, no, I didn't want to be what they were in the film. I wanted to do what they did, the actresses did in life, and just like go from film to film and and take on different characters and things like that. Um, I was very far from the small but growing film industry in South Africa at that time. So I was like, all right, what are my, my choices? And my choice was stage. So I literally started doing um, straight plays and musicals and everything in between. Um, and that's how I sort of cut my teeth in the acting world. Um, I've been on stage since I was six, but I was doing dance shows until mid-high school. But from then on, I just did any play or musical that I could actually find and just didn't stop. So as far as um, like now, of course, like I said, you've done hundreds of roles, so it'd be hard to, I'm sure to pinpoint just one, but what would you say your favorite character or your, you know, your particular part that you like, What, what which one would you say was your favorite? Um, I always refuse to answer that question, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll give you uh, three favorites. Um, let me see. Um, Let's go with The Remains tonight. I played Madame Addison in The Remains. And what was so much fun, um, my character was like this this medium, this psychic um, from about 100 years back. And we had a full-on seance um, that we had to set up and work through. It was like 15 pages of dialogue or something. And just to recreate a seance like that, and I had the period wig and the period costume and everything, was amazing. Then in the middle of the seance, I get possessed. And I, I end up wearing like these, scleral contact lenses and being all demony and everything and that was so much fun so much so much fun i'll go with madam addison tonight yes so okay now what would you say be your most grueling part like which one like really put a lot of stress on you to uh, i mean whether for me from like an actual costume standpoint or just like a from a mental getting into the character standpoint um I did a one-day cameo um, in a feature film about a year back. It hasn't come out yet, so I can't give the name. But the contact lenses they gave me to wear was like, um, it was um, full, full on white. I couldn't see through them. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, terrible. Uh, that was a little bit um, like, help me, I don't know where I'm going sort of thing. So I like it when I can see. Let's just put it that way. So do you have like a seeing eye demon or anything with you to, to help you along or? Not on that shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, as far as like, um, now, what would you say as far as like, um, what, what are your favorite movies? Like not necessarily, I guess it'd be really horror related, but just like your all time favorite movies that you've, you know, that you watched growing up or, you know, um, mainstream indie. I mean, do you have a preference or? Oh, um, the favorite movies that I watched growing up, definitely The Music Man, one thing. I watched that over and over and over and over and over again. Shirley Jones and uh, Rob Preston. Also, Raiders of the Lost Ark, I absolutely adored that. But as I've grown up and I watch other films, um, my two favorites at the moment are the um, original cut of, of Metropolis. Um, the... 
the longer cut of Metropolis. You know, um, lost footage was found, etc. And I really, really love that longer cut. And funnily enough, um, one of my favorite all-time films is The Lovely Bones. I think um, Saoirse Ronan just does a brilliant, brilliant job in that film. And just to watch her perform in that film just, like, blows me away every single time. So as far as um, now, like, as you said you mentioned something about having, like, I guess, uh, in in the in South Africa, they had, like, a, I guess, do they have, like, their own, like, I guess how India has the Bollywood. I mean, does South Africa have its own kind of, like, Hollywood down down that way or? Um, I'm not sure, actually, because I haven't actually worked in the country since I left. I've been back, but I haven't shot a film there yet. Um, I know a lot of American and other um, projects come and shoot in South Africa because of the scenery and other factors like that. But I don't think they have a Nollywood, for instance, like Nigeria has or a, a Bollywood like India has. Well, not yet, but who knows what could happen. So now, okay, when you're not actually shooting films, because like I said, it looks like you've, I mean, you've been cranking them out and stuff. I mean, it's just mm. insane looking at your IMDb there. It's uh, so impressive. Um, what do you do for, like, in your spare time? Like, if you, I mean, do you have hobbies or things that you like to do outside of acting or? Oh, absolutely. Um, I also have a knitting business. I knit scarves and I knit blankets and things like that that I sell through my online shop. In fact, I'm busy, look, making another blanket right now. Nice. For an order, yes. Um, and that really calms me. I can put on Netflix or Amazon Prime or DVD or whatever and just sit and watch something and just work on my knitting projects. And it just calms my mind. All the stress from the shoots and the, the, the scheduling, the constant stress from scheduling um, just floats away. And I can just relax and, like, you know, block the world out for a couple hours, which is sometimes a really good thing to do. So I mean, uh, of course, you'll have to put that on the, uh, you know, on the on the on the Scarefest uh, chat here. Uh, if you like, you know, put the website up there so people can check that out. Because uh, oh, sure, thank I mean, that's, you. Uh, that's a big thing, especially where we live. I mean, a lot of people like the, uh, the you know, the custom knit, you know, especially scarves or you know, afghans and and things like that. People love that. So um, if you'd like to, you know, promote that, we'd love to see it. And, love to. Thank you. Uh, you know, and um, now, as far as um, like, you know, you're, you said that you. You know, that, that, I understand about the whole calming things. I make costumes and things and, and uh, eventually getting back and making masks. So I, I understand how, nice. how calming and the you know, effect that is. So, I mean, um, now as far as, um, <clears throat> you know, as like I said, you, you said you were, when you were a kid, you'd like to do a lot of dance and things. Did you have like any kind of particular favorite things you'd like to do? Is it like musical, like, um, like show tunes or, you know? Uh, my mom stuck me in ballet classes when I was like six years old. Um, I did ballet, I did tap, I did a bit of Highland dancing um, for at least eight years, I think, until I stopped with that. Um, but as far as music goes, I adore musicals. I adore like 80s classic rock. I adore heavy metal. Um, I adore opera. I adore ballet. So I've got this like very wide music um, taste. It just depends on what I feel like listening to on any particular day. But yes, I love musicals too. Yes. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, as far as like, uh, now you have your own production company, right? You have like, uh, it's Monster Works 66. Is that? Um, yeah, I had it. Um, I stopped uh, producing through that in December 2015, where I had to take a bit of a hiatus from acting and producing because life. Um, and I haven't taken up producing again yet because I've just been inundated with acting projects and I haven't really had the time to promote to producing, which is very, very time consuming. Um, but the films that I did help co-produce are mostly all out there and available and award winning and wonderful things like that. So I'm very proud of them. Yeah, I was uh, I was thinking, I know that uh, there for a long time, uh, I remember seeing, you know, you promoting it and then it kind of kind of disappeared. Mm. So I got kind of worried about what, you know, what happened. But um, are you yeah. planning that back up or is that, you know? Um, not at the moment, because I literally have um, acting projects like from here to Christmas, you know, and they take time to prepare and to get into and to learn lines and to rehearse and to shoot and to whatnot. Um, so I need to concentrate on those before I sort of maybe try and start producing again. You know, I just it's the choice um, out of acting and producing. It's producing I can live without 
acting, I cannot live without. I mean, I can breathe and walk around, but I'm very, very unhappy. Sad panda, hashtag sad panda, when I cannot act. Uh, yeah, and I would say, you know, being, like I said, again, looking at your IMDb, which, uh, you know, if you guys listening, check her IMDb out. Like I said, there's a lot of fantastic movies. And uh, like I said, I know I rant rave about Diner because that is one of my favorites. Uh, that was like one of the first. I Actually, I think it was the first DVD I bought uh, that had you in it. So, and uh, it's, it's still one of my favorites. Actually, it sits right close to my favorite zombie. I have like, a little section quarantined off. That's my, my favorites on my shelf. So that one's like in my favorites there. So, but uh, now, as far as like your current works and everything, do you have some things that you that's already out that you like to promote that um, you know that you know go out and watch now and check it out or? Absolutely, um, we saw the trailer for Krampus Origins. That's been out from November. So if you haven't caught that one yet, even though it isn't Christmas, do so. Um, I call it a YA horror, young adult horror, um, because it's about this group of like high school kids, orphans, really, from say a hundred years back, who try and fight the Krampus demon who's been kidnapping kids with the help of a teacher played by my very good friend Katie Peabody. Um, had a wonderful time with Robert Conway, so totally watch um, Krampus Origins. Then the next one out was All the Creatures Were Stirring, which is a Christmas anthology horror. Um, I don't say a word, but apparently people have told me that um, they'll never forget me <laughs> from that film. So apparently I made an impression, which is awesome. David and Rebecca McKendry um created all the creatures were stirring and it's a wonderful film with amazing uh, reviews so far my latest that came out was about a month back um it was a film i did for my friend roxy she um she's a american korean director um and she's made a beautiful film which is a completely different take on the vampire story um it is called painkillers and i got to play a wonderful scene with misha barton who i had always admired um, and I was so very pleased to be able to work with her, and she's adorable to work with. So that was amazing. That one um, came out about a month back, and as far as I remember, last time we looked, it was sitting at 80% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, which is awesome. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'll go and grab that one. It's out on all, like, VOD platforms, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, those are the three that recently came out. Um, to mainstream. I have several that are on the um, festival circuit right now. And, of course, a couple in post-production and other things. Ha, ha, ha. Yes. So, like, as far as, like, say if somebody wanted to go out and check out some of your best works, what would you think they would find that? Would it be on, like, Netflix or Amazon Prime or is it kind of uh, um, all over? I would go with Amazon Prime right now or just Amazon. Um, a lot of my stuff was on Netflix, but they rotate so quickly that it disappears, you know. Um, and also, there's a lot of my stuff on Full Moon, um, their Full Moon streaming channel. I did trophy hits for them. I did um, uh, Killjoy Psycho Circus for them. And I did Raven Wolf, Raven Wolf Towers for them. So there's three of my, my three Full Moon projects are there. And a lot of my stuff is on Amazon, huge amount. I say, I, oh. my favorite ones to check out is always Amazon Prime because they always have you know excellent selection. Yeah, I find you know dig through there and find some of the. the uh, of course, you know I've always been big in the indie scene anyway, so that's mm. it, that's big. I think it's pretty much how we had met initially was uh, like some mm -hmm. independent films and things. Uh, uh, but, uh, what I can say, uh, Jason, is what I've done in in on my Facebook fan page. I made a very small um, photo album for each of my feature films. And where it is available, I've added the link to where you can see the film in my description of the album. So if anyone really wants to track down my work, they should just go to my Facebook fan page, photo albums, and you can see all my feature film albums, and the links will be there. I'll tell you what, um, I think it's actually getting close to a commercial break. Um, I will go ahead and grab that link, and I'll post that in the, in the uh, group chat there. So that way everybody can check it out. And if you'd like to send me the link uh, to your, you know, the hobby page that you're, you know, that you referenced earlier, I'll, I'll have mm. to put that up. We'll put that on there and get that going. Okay, we'll do. All right, and, Wes. And everybody, you're watching Scarefest Radio. Our guest tonight is Maria Olson. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, I will <clears> give you what you need to say on the Scarefest Facebook page to win a three-day pass to this year's event. We'll be right back. Do you feel lost in life? 
Do you seem to be stuck in emotions that are not yours? Is your home not the sanctuary it should be? Contact Spirit Mechanics, where they take a team approach to your metaphysical and spiritual problems. Spirit Mechanics specializes in aura cleansing, stone attunement, attachment removal, and house cleansings. Spirit Mechanics tailors their approach to your individual spiritual path and needs. Find them every month at Lexington, Kentucky's Mystical Fair, mysticalfairlex.com, or on Facebook by searching Spirit Mechanics, that's M-E-C-H-A-N-I-X. Spirit Mechanics, for your spiritual health and well-being. And welcome back, everybody, to Scarefest Radio. On the Scarefest Facebook page, I want to see the first person that underneath, I put a little link here, we will do the contest for a three-day pass right here, underneath tonight's banner. Mind your own knitting. Tonight's phrase is, mind your own knitting in honor of Maria's hobby. Uh, now, Maria... There's a question I wanted to ask, and there is absolutely no diplomatic way to ask it. So, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> when I This year, I did a uh, Scream Queen. I was a moderator for a Scream Queen panel at the Scarefest. The, the overreaching theme when I, of, the, of, the, of, the, uh, of the panel was as actresses age... There are fewer and fewer parts available to them. What the hell have you done to buck this trend? You did 50, you had 15 films released in 2018. Or in shorts. I can't, according to IMDb, in 2018, you had 15 projects released that year. Most actresses don't do that in their lifetime. It is true that. A lot of films do not have roles for older women. I can see that every day. If mm -hmm. 10 feature film breakdowns, you know, if I find 10 feature film breakdowns on whatever casting website I'm looking at, maybe three of them will have good roles for older women. You know, the rest will just not have that demographic. So there is truth to the rumor that as you age, especially, especially as a woman, um, your opportunities get less and less, fewer and fewer. Um, I guess I've just been lucky in being able to find projects that do have those roles and that I've been able to audition for them or have been invited into them and that I have been found to be acceptable to the producers and directors, you know, so that I can play those roles. Um I firmly believe in luck, so I'm going to just go with, I guess I'm just lucky. Um, it also sounds like you've got a work ethic that I, me being a farmer, could only aspire to. Because I don't, when I listen to that answer, you go out and you find the roles. And I think, I think, um, mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, people in the industry wait for their agent to, you know, call them up with, I found the perfect part for you. It doesn't sound like that's yeah. how you handle it. No, it isn't. You know, there's a whole level of indie filmmaking, especially indie horror filmmaking that's happening across the country at any given time. And those breakdowns are never, ever, ever going to go through agents. They're going to be on the smaller casting websites or newsflash, they're going to be out there on Facebook. And they're out there for people <laughs> to find if you just put the hours in to look for them. And when I submit for roles that suit me, um, I am lucky that I have recognizable credits. So that'll either, you know, get me, that'll get me one of two responses. Either, hey, yeah, we like what you do. Please audition for this role for us. Or, hey, wow, we love what you do. Would you like this role? Obviously, I like option B more than I do option A. But option A is fine. As long as someone gives me an opportunity for something, I am happy. Uh, now, I used that question, that terribly, terribly undiplomatic question, to lead into what you've got that's fresh 
uh, just ready to be uh, on streaming. These were some of the names that you threw out to us. Um, Beast of Our Fathers. What can you tell? Any of these you can't tell me about, just say, go move to the next one. But I want to hear about what, what can we expect Beast of Our Fathers? Tell us a little bit about that project. At the moment, uh, Beast of Our Fathers has a locked cut, and they're just doing things like color correction, sound design, score. Um, we shot it in Lisbon, Ohio in October in very, very, very cold days um, and wet and rainy days in the woods. Yay. Um, but it's about a, an FBI agent who travels back to the small town in Ohio where you grew up to investigate a mysterious series of murders in the woods and uh, believe me when I tell you, he finds way more than he bargains for. So, yes, that's that one. Next out of the gate. I, and I, I think what I love more about these horror films, more than the, the, the names of them, they just bring all this uh, beautiful imagery to mind. Uh, Sunday Night Slaughter. <clears throat> ah, The Sunday Night Slaughter is an anthology horror film that I originally was co-producing with my good friend Edward Payson of an anti-hero production. And then when I stopped producing, I just had a step back and he sort of took over the entire project. Um, I actually did some ADR for him yesterday on my role in that film. So it is nearing the end of post-production and hopefully we'll be able to start entering festivals and things like that towards the end of the year. Year. Um, it's got like it reads like a who's who in horror. Um, Brad Potts, Felissa Rose, um, Corey Haim. No, at the Corey, um, <laughs> not Corey Haim. That would be a trick. Um, so there's a it, lot of us. It's a horror movie. <laughs> um, well, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, but no. Um, <laughs> now, the, the um, next, so yeah, there's a lot of us in it. The uh, the next question. This is kind of an opinion thing. I see a lot of horror anthology films. Hmm. I don't see any, you know, uh, romance, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Never never saw any anthologies of that, that type of stuff. You don't see a lot of comedy an anthologies. It, do you think there's something? Are there just that many good scary stories out there? Or what? what is about horror that lends itself so well to the an anthology type movie? I think a lot of that comes from the fact that anthology horror short story books were so very popular. So it's a it's a transition from one medium to the next. You know, you don't need a 90 minute setup to scare someone or to make them disturb someone or to creep them out or anything. You only need a very few uh, minutes to do that and if you can do that within a properly structured story why take 90 minutes you know and it's also a learning curve for beginning filmmakers um, because to be just thrown into making a full feature film is terrifying I promise you it is so do a short story do a short film that you can do over a weekend and find out how everything works and I think those two factors combined are creating the importance of the short horror film in, within the genre, you know? Uh, very quickly, our uh, our winner for tonight was Gail Jabba. Gail, you are you did win a three-day pass. She's won, what did she win last time? She went, wasn't a pass, it was something else. Oh, I, I think it was an autographed picture of someone. So she is a obviously a regular... Um, Oh, she won the concert. I, I, she might have won the concert tickets. Maybe that's what it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, uh, so she is our winner tonight. I uh, hit it right off the bat. I am going to um, toss it over now to Jason. All right. So now, <clears throat> is there something like as far as like in terms of movies and stuff? Is there like a role or a movie or you know like say uh, maybe a, like you said a story? Is there something that you've always wanted wanted to do but haven't done yet? Or I really like doing things that are different. You know, um, I love playing complex, emotionally layered roles. Um, I love playing roles without any dialogue because I like the physical expression that roles like that call for. 
but I've had an idea in my mind for a long, long time about a character that I would love to play and that I would, when I have two seconds together, love to write a script for. Um, you know, um, in like the horror movies of old, there's the character Igor, and it's usually some small, misshapen character who wanders around after the mad scientist. Well, I sort of reimagined Igor as a woman. And I love horror comedy, as you probably saw from Diner. And I think it would be, just be so much fun to play a character like Igor and just like save the world or something like that. Um, I just, I don't know. There's something about physical horror comedy acting that that just makes me very, very happy. So I want to bring Igor to the world at some stage. And I'm talking E-Y-E-G-O-R-E, -E, Igor. So, like, um, I mean, now I agree. Like I said, I, I, it's something when I, I was growing up I never thought would be, you know, able to mesh would be the comedy and the horror aspect of it. But I tell you, it's like some films like Diner and, like, you know, Shaun of the Dead. I mean, some of those really can pull that off. And, I, I mean, it's, it's oh, amazing. Oh, yeah. That they can, you know, they can do that with, you know, because, you know, you don't think blood mm -hmm. and guts and zombies mm -hmm. and murderers can actually be funny, but, you know, they are. Um, now, as far as, um, um, you know, you, as far as from like the fans, say, you know, say somebody wanted to break into acting, what would you personally recommend? I mean, how would you say go about, you know, breaking into acting? Mm -hmm. um, I would say start out with whatever you can get, like go on auditions, um, as many as auditions as you can possibly get for theater, for film, whatever is closest to you, whatever you can find, um, so that you get experience and you get confidence within yourself. Um, once you find out what roles you are suited for, and that comes from seeing what roles you book and also seeing how you come across on screen, then you can refine your choices of what roles you put yourself up for, you submit to, because it helps if you submit for the correct type of roles. Otherwise, you're never even going to be called into audition. Um, yep, yeah, classes, as much experience as you can have, and do not discount doing background work. You can learn a lot from background work. I did some in my time. Um, get a, a, a very good headshot. You need an amazing headshot in this business because most of it is done online now. And if your little tiny picture doesn't look good, doesn't pop, you're not even going to be called in. And get all of these things in place before you actually start looking for an agent or something because agents usually like to see that people have experience and they know what they're doing before they sign you. Don't just jump into getting an agent or something like that. Um, but of course... All of this presupposes that you cannot live without acting. If you think it might be a fun hobby, if you want to try it, if you're not sure, if you want to do it for the fame and fortune and celebrity red carpets, then just don't do it. That's not the game. The game is a lot of hard work, long hours, a lot of, I'm not going to say rejection, but I'm going to say missed opportunities maybe when you don't book something because it's not rejection you've got to get your mind right on that um it's a lot of stress a lot of eating peanut butter and crackers when your employed friends go out for supper you know so it's a huge time and money and dedication effort commitment and if you don't have the willingness or the power to stay the distance, then just rather go into something that you love more. Yeah, so My that's uh, that's kind of where, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are, uh, they think, you know, like you said, they're kind of like, um, I think it'd be fun to do or, you know. I, I mean, you have you that is on the opposite end of the spectrum here that's dedicated to your craft and stuff, and it's just completely, you know, admirable. And, you know, I, I know some of my friends that were kind of like, oh, I think it'd be fun, you know. Um, I, I don't think they realize, like you said, how much work really goes into it and how, you know, how grueling it can be. Mm -hmm, and, and, mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I've even heard friends of mine that were background characters in other movies. I mean, even that itself is grueling. They didn't have any acting parts. It was just, oh God, you know, like you said, they were there. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's I think it's time for a well. right here, I think, um, I might have to turn it back over to Wes here for a second. Okay. We'll be right back with more Scarefest Radio. 
everyone is talking about CBD oil. Most of us know that CBD is a cannabis compound that has significant medical benefits, but does not make people high. Its benefits include pain relief, anti-seizure properties, anxiety relief, fights cancer, reduces the risk of diabetes, and it is even used as a sleep aid. Blue Leaf Naturals CBD and hemp products are full spectrum hemp extract oils. They use only hemp grown in Kentucky, supporting Kentucky farmers and businesses and helping you and your family stay healthy and well. Blue Leaf Naturals, created with care from seed to shelf. Visit their website at blueleafnaturals.com. Blue Leaf Naturals, a Kentucky proud company. Coyote Chris Sutton. Shamanism. Spiritual advisement. Paranormal investigations. Inspirational presentations. Bringing light to the darkest places for over 20 years. Go to coyotechris.com to learn more. And welcome back to our final segment of Scarefest Radio with our special guest, Marie Olson. Uh, I just want to point out, uh, before I ask my next question, Marie, you just you just described in your last answer to Jason why I'm a second-rate podcaster. I just ha- I, 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 I don't have the acting bug. I'm going to stay in my place and, do, and just dick up one thing at a time. I'm just going to dick up one thing at a time. Um... Of the parts <laughs> that you've played, that you that come to mind, uh, I got this is kind of a two part question. Which one comes? Does do any of them come to mind that you felt it was your biggest stretch personally? In other words, a part that really I don't want to say it was hard, but you felt like you really um, reached <clears throat> into your abilities to to play the part. I'm going to go with the role of Shavella in Fear Binds. Um, it's a, a psych thriller I'm doing with my friend Natalie Lauer um, down in San Diego. And she approached me about the role um, when I was in South Africa, actually, in, um, in November. And she's like, this is something very different than what you've played before. She's like this high fashion, um, always well put together sort of bossy, emotionally unavailable mother. Um, you know, there's no, like, grr, arg, zombies, werewolf thing that I usually play. There's no um, huge costumes or special effects makeup or anything like that that I, that I usually play with. Um, this is a real person, and she's very different from who you are. And I'm like, uh, ooh, that was me swallowing. Gulp. Um, but I was like, uh, sure, let me read the script. So I read the, the script that she sent over to me and I really enjoyed the emotional connection that she had, or, or rather in her case, didn't have with her daughter who Natalie actually plays. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm just going to jump into this and do the very best that I can. And if you look at my pictures in my fear binds photo album on Facebook, you'll see I'm in miniskirts and stockings and brightly colored clothing and this outrageous blonde curly wig. I look so different from what I usually do that I can look at those pictures and I can be like, wait, who is that? That's that's not me. So that was something very different to what I what I usually played, but I really had a good time doing it. Now, uh, my next question, I hope it's not the same answer, otherwise I just blew my, my segment. Um, this is something I actually should start asking the guests before they're on the air so that I can actually experience it for myself. But I wanted to ask you now, if you had if the people that are watching the show and if you said, what part, is there a part that you're most proud of? In other words, if you had to point at one on your IMDb page and say, watch that damn movie, is there one, it doesn't have to be your favorite, but it just the part that you felt that you, you really shined. Absolutely, and it'll be out next month. Well, 
which one? Surely you can tell us which one. <laughs> Can't even do- Okay, everybody, anything yeah. that comes out <laughs> next month. <laughs> let me go to your IMDb page. I'll just give them a list here. Um, when Okay, when you say it's coming out, is, is it scheduled to hit streaming DVD? At least give us a hint as far as where we're going to be able to catch that first. Can you, can you give us that? Watch the trailer that came out two days ago for I Speed on Your Grave, Deja Vu, and at the end of the trailer, you'll see exactly where you can find it. There you go. There you go. Um, Jason, you got about five minutes. I'm going to turn it over to you to close out the show. So now, <clears throat> as far as like, uh, you know, and, and like I said, you've done hundreds of films, and it's probably not exactly an easy question to answer, but who would you say your favorite director is? Or director? I'm not going to answer that one either. <laughs> I never answer that question. <laughs> is there anybody you want to call? So why did you say my name? So, uh, yeah. I, you could, I you know could have went through whoever you're, you're like uh, auditioning for now. Yeah, I thought, well, Pretty much. <laughs> like, if it's Tuesday, it must be Joseph. Yeah. There you go. Joseph is my favorite director. <laughs> yeah, I'll say, because, uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's probably, uh, and we've, you know, we've asked a lot of the celebrities in the past, you know, and a lot of them are like, you know, they, they have their favorite director. It's the one that always, you know, does everything, do, you know, takes all the suggestions and runs with them. So I didn't know if you had one or if it was like, you know, but I, I would say the probably correct answer is all of them. All of them, totally. <laughs> there is one. Di- in fact, there are two directors that I've worked with, and both of them did something that sort of no one else did, and that is push me out of my comfort zone. Um, I have great respect for both of them. One of them I would love to work with again. The other one I'm terrified to work with again because I don't know how far he'll push me out of my comfort zone that time. <laughs> um, but I think it would be a very good thing for me to work with both of them again. Just so that I can get pushed, because once I'm in a rut, I just do the same thing over and over, and I, it's different and interesting, and sometimes completely terrifying, to be pushed out of your rut. Uh, as far as um, like some of the cast you've worked with, have you got some people that you know that you really enjoyed working with, and or have worked with multiple times, or? Um. It seems like Jamie Bernadette and I have signed up to be to both be in almost every film in existence right now. Um, no, seriously, there's about 15 films or something that we are attached to that are in various stages of development, pre-production, or whatever it may be. Um, I've already done several films with her. One is obviously Ice Put in Your Great Deja Vu. Um, another one coming out soon is Her Own State of Desolation that she produced. Um, another one was um, Bunny Man, the second in the Bunny Man franchise. Although we did not get to meet each other on that set because we were not in the same scenes. Um, but it seems like almost every film these days I'm with Jamie. so Which is awesome because she's amazing. So, yeah. I'll say, yeah, because, um, I mean, because uh, I, yeah, I was going through that list there and uh, seen, yeah, I noticed that she was kind of in there. That's why I asked the question. I saw her, you know, in a lot of the uh, a lot of the same movies and things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I mean, but, yeah, it looks like from your IMDb page, which, like I said, it's amazing. It looks like you're not slowing down. I don't see how you find time, honestly. I mean, you know, it's like just one after another. And, I mean, of course, you know, it seems like each one is getting bigger and bigger as you, you know, as you climb along. That's the plan. <laughs> See, <I> mean, everything is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, now as far as like the, I guess, you know, um, you know, do you have like a, a you know, I mean, I, I know you do prim- primarily horror, but I mean, do you have like, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, things that you like to promote that are not horror or. Oh, absolutely. I just got finished shooting Eminence Hill with Robert Conway again in um, Arizona in January. That is a Western. And although I play a rather forbidding, sinister character, I'm certainly not in any way horror-related. Um, so that was fun, being in a different genre for the first time. To was my first time doing a Western feature. That was a lot of fun. We shot in an outdoor pioneer museum just outside of Phoenix, Arizona. Um, a lot of awesome things. A lot of fun. 
Um, I've obviously done um, like fantasy films, like um, Percy Jackson was fantasy, um, Dragon Quest was fantasy. I've done my share of science fiction. Lost Time, for instance, was science fiction. Um, I've done comedy. Um, Disorientation is a college comedy, um, and it's actually hilarious. So that one, if you, if anyone's into college comedies with a lot of drinking and girls in bikinis, you should track that one down on on Amazon. You know. So I have worked in, I wouldn't say every, but almost every genre. But my first love is horror, and the one that I think I'm most suited for is horror. I was going to say, because, I mean, uh, I mean, um, you know, predominantly a lot of the movies on your page is horror, but I know I've, I've seen some things in there that wasn't, so... Um, mm. I didn't, I know that uh, a lot of times people don't want to be, you know, you know, you want to be pigeonholed into your, you know, uh, you know, you know, specific genres. And, uh, mm. of course, like I said, I'm gonna have to check that one out too. Cause, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to hit prime here shortly and I'll, uh, I'll be, I'll be sure to, you know, go ahead and get that one on there. Uh, added my playlist there. So, um, Wes, do you got any other questions? I have one last question. Um, and I just wrote down. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Um, one thing that was unusual about my research, if you will, for tonight's show. Usually, when I go on Amazon Prime or whatever and search for my guest, whatever it is showing, I'll say it. I find some trash. And <laughs> everything I watched for you was made very, very well. In other words, have are you at that point in your career where you can set your standards high, um, or or will you are are you still taking? Are you just happy to be working? I, I guess that's the most diplomatic way to put that. I'm happy to be working. You know, um, that's not to say I like being in bad films, but I do take pride in the fact that at least three of my films have been called the worst movie ever in the history of ever. Um, but that's fine. Um, you know, even if a project doesn't get completed, you've still made connections with filmmakers, with crew, with producers, with actors. So I don't really see it as time wasted. You know, I like working on set. I like acting. And sometimes just auditioning will do it for me. And I will leave the audition room going, well, that was a good day's work. It doesn't matter if I get it or not. I've acted today in front of people. I've done what I love today. So I just like to work. I just like to act. Once again, there's that damn work ethic. I, I love it. Everybody, this has been Scarefest Radio. Maria, I want to thank you so much for coming on tonight. It's been great talking to you. It's been very interesting. And yes, I will be watching for these new projects uh, coming out over the uh, next 30 days. So I can really yeah. Shine. <laughs> <laughs> thanks everybody. Thank you so much for having me. It was thank awesome. You. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody. I want to thank you for watching. Congratulations, Gail Jabba. We will see you next week.